Okay, so this is the um, Tissue Tech Embedding Center. Um, it has three consoles. This is the thermal console, and it holds the um, the boats or embedding molds. So we have several sizes. We have three sizes in here: a smaller, and then the medium, and then a larger one. And in here it has a warm chamber that we keep the after we take the tissue off the processor, we put the cassettes in here and it keeps them warm. And now some histology technicians, they keep this full of paraffin. I don't do that and I keep this nice and wiped out and dry, but some do. Here we have the dispensing console and that's where um, this chamber here holds the paraffin. I never fill it um, more than three quarters full. Usually for this lab, I keep it at half full. And once it becomes empty, I'll kind of wipe it out or I'll just keep adding to it. It just depends on what it's looking like in there on the bottom. It looks pretty clean today. And this right here is a warm stage. And these are warmers for the forceps. And this here you, is a lever for pushing, for dispensing the paraffin, as you can see. And this right here is a little bit of a cold spot and that's for just a quick chill as you're getting aligning your stuff and then you want to quick chill it and I'll show you that in a minute. This whole area over here is the cryo console. You want this between minus four and minus seven right around there and it takes about 20 minutes to a half hour to get to the right um, temperature for embedding. So I turn that on. Actually I turn all of this on in advance. So if I know the evening before that I'm going to be embedding stuff's going to be coming off the processor. I'll have these two on, and, but I'll wait till in the morning to turn this on. You really don't want to leave this cryo console on 24 hours or longer. It's, it's kind of like leaving your freezer open. It's, it will have just break it, so you don't want to do that. Anyway, I have some samples. Oh, another thing about this. We have a drawer here, and that collects paraffin when, as it's dripping down. So when we're finished embedding and stuff, we're going to want to scrape this all out and give everything a good wiping and cleaning, and I'll talk about that later. For now, let's get started embedding. I, I never open more than one cassette at a time, and if you heed that rule, it will save you someday. The reason for that is if a little sample jumps out into another cassette, which it can easily pop out, and you'll be surprised how that can happen, um, you won't know which cassette or, or what tissue it was in that cassette. So to avoid that ever happening, just only open one at a time. So I'm going to see what I have here. I have one little testy sample, and I'm going to embed that as a cross-section. So what I do is I put a little bit of paraffin in this mold. Now this is warm, so I'm keeping this um, mold on the warm area. I'm going to take my sample, which is this little uh, mouse testes here. I'm just putting it off to the side just to show you what it is. I don't normally do that. But I'm going to kind of grab it in a way because I want it um, cross-section, so I'm going to grab it in a way that I can embed it cross-section. So I'm going to get it orientated the way I want with my forceps, and then I'm going to bring it to this cold and let that create a small film on the bottom and hold it into place. And then see if it needs any little adjustment, which it does. So there, now it's a nicely embedded, nicely aligned um, cross-section. So now I'm going to put this on top. Add a little more paraffin, just so I can see it. Make sure there's no air bubbles, and then I'm going to put it for its final chilling over here. Now, I don't throw away the lid because some samples are so tiny that you could miss something. So I don't throw the lid away right away. I give it a little look and um, make sure there was nothing like an epididymis or something in one of the corners that I missed. Then I throw it away. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. Again, we're only opening one cassette at a time. I want to see what size tissue I'm looking at. So it's another small testes. This one I'll embed as a sagittal section. So I'll take my sample out. 
I'll get it aligned exactly where I want it. I like it to be more in the center. Kind of touch it. So now my forceps are getting a little bit cool and it comes and wants to stick to that um, sample. So you'll notice that I rapidly keep interchanging forceps and that's the reason I do that. So I'm grabbing another warm forcep and you'll get used to being in that habit. And then I'm going to touch it. You can see the small layer of paraffin kind of chilling. So that holds it in place. And I'm going to touch it down to make sure it's nice and even on the bottom. I'm going to put the cassette lid on top. Put a little more paraffin. Make sure there's no bubbles. Now this one does happen to have a bubble underneath. I can see it. So I'm going to lift this up and put it back on. And then I'm going to bring it over to this for a final chilling. And again, I'm looking at the lid and I don't see any other epididymis or something stuck to the lid. Okay, let's see what we got here. Now it says on the side it's a kidney, so we'll see. All right, again, I'll do this one um, sagittally. I don't see anything on the lid. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw that away. I'll use another small mold. You wanna try to get the mold that um, is the right size for the sample. It doesn't make sense to use a mold like this for a tiny sample like that. Now, if you had a big, um, like several liver pieces or a whole brain or something, I mean, then you might want to use this for mouse samples. Very rarely do we use the large ones. Okay, so I'll take this kidney sample. I'll put it in there. I'm going to do it sagittally just because I know that that's what um, is going to be wanted for this. And I'm going to do a little bit of a chilling and I'm going to touch it down because I want it to, to um, not have an area that's raised. So that's why I do that. Sometimes I even come over to the um, even colder area to get it chilled quicker. The reason I like to chill things a little quicker and use this one if I can rather than this one is because paraffin um, actually crystallizes as it's chilling and the faster it chills, the smaller the crystals on the, so then it doesn't tend to spread really quickly on the water bath. So if you ever notice you have one block that's just odd, it's been embedded the same way as everything else you've done everything the same, but for some reason it wants to really spread out on the water bath, that's likely the cause is that it just wasn't chilled quick enough. Maybe it got some paraffin on the bottom here and it created a little bit of an insulating factor and then made it um, chill really slowly or this thing was just wasn't cold enough. So what you'd simply do is just re-embed that particular sample, melt it down and re-embed it and chill it quicker. And that should solve the problem of it spreading too quickly on the water bath. Okay, and I see that there's nothing on the lid. Again, I'm going to put a little bit of paraffin in the bottom here. Now you can put just a little, you can fill it. It really doesn't matter that much. Just you'll have might have messier edges by filling it more. So I'm getting this nice and centered and I'm doing this particular one sagittally. And I'm going to go over here to this cold one because I, I really do like to chill it quicker. Have it nice and centered. And you can see it's centered in there in the mold. And then I'm going to put the lid on top. Add just a little more paraffin. And Let's move along. Let's do another one, a kidney here. Actually, I wanted to see if I had one with epididymis to give you an idea of orientating that. If, yes, I do. Okay, so for this one, it has, um, I'll make, show you what this one has. It has two testes and we have two epididymis. So this is going to be a little bit different. This is going to require me to do some orientation and to make sure those epididymis to get the whole long view of them. So for a sample like this, what is required is I need a sagittal, I need a longitudinal or a cross-section. 
and I have this epididymis and that epididymis and I need to make sure they're both down. So it creates a little bit more of a challenge for a beginner. Also for this one, I'm going to use, I could use a smaller one, but for our demonstration purposes, I'm gonna use this medium sized mold. I'm gonna first put these epididymis in. the idea. Okay, I don't know if you can see that. When I touch them down, I'll show you again. Now I'm not going to cut these. Normally we cut them and hopefully I have a larger one here to show you what I do for that. Um, these are small enough that I don't want to um, actually cut them. So I'm going to do one sagittally or what we call longitudinal and then this particular one I'm going to do as a cross section. So I'm going to hold it. Oh. I'm going to hold it the way I want. Get it orientated. And I'm going to slowly and carefully move it over here and get it chilled. And I'm holding it to be the cross section and get it in there the way I want. And you want them fairly close together, everything, but not necessarily touching. Okay. Now since it's chilling, I want to get these all touched down because I want it all even on the bottom. So I'm getting it all touched down with these warm forceps. I'm touching the sample all down. I want to even, you can see this one end wants to keep poop lifting up. And it, that's important because if you have one end that's sticking up, when you go to cut, you will not get that end of the tissue. Okay, you want to really move fairly rapidly. I'm kind of um, have gone a little bit too long because you'll see a little bit of a layering effect if you don't move fast enough. And then I'll put the paraffin in and hopefully I have no bubbles underneath, which I do. So I'll lift it a little bit and put, bring it back down. Okay, I'm going to show you the final result on that when we're done. Okay, now this particular sample, it, these um, testes are large enough to cut. And in this lab, we do a, again, a cross section, longitudinal section. Um, so I'm gonna take these testes out. I actually let them warm up a little bit in the um, paraffin because they were a little bit colder than the actual paraffin. So I'm gonna use a fresh blade. That's one thing to know is if it kind of gives you a little trouble cutting, Try another edge of the blade or um, get a new blade because they're very easy just to, if the blade is a little bit dull, to, to actually squish the tissue and you'll have a really bad result. So I'm going to start with this little, little one here. Since it's small, I'm going to make that one the cross section. So you really want to try to get it as even as possible and find that middle area and get an idea. Now I've been doing this a while, but I know that when I first started, it was, you know, sometimes I've cut too far one way or the other, and you really don't want to do that. So get it rested and do a nice clean cut. Okay, so I have that. And then I'm going to take this one here, and we're going to, again, you want a nice even, so I'm holding it with the forceps. And this one I'm going to do cross section. I'm sorry, that was cross section. This is longitudinal. So I'm going to get it here and get it right in the middle. And again, I'm gonna come down and give it a nice clean cut. Okay, so you can see. And you end up with these like this. And then my forceps are getting cold, so I'll get a warm one. So you have, so you have the samples just like this. And these are the um, longitudinal. These are the cross sections. So our lab, we, consistently do the same thing. And that's gonna be important to be very consistent in what you embed and how you orientate it. It's gonna be consistent because it just shows um, that you know what you're doing if you do it the same way and have it orientated the same way. Other people that come in, instead of having it all over the place, that just shows that um, you're inexperienced. So try to be, um, Keep them orientated nicely, always in the same way, in the same direction, nicely centered. So we, I'm putting the sagittal sections on top. That's what we always do here. I'm putting the cross sections 
I put the longitudinal sections on top, I put the cross sections next. Then at the bottom, I'm putting these epididymis and getting those up close. And now I want to carefully get this to the chill plate and not move my nice orientation. So I'm going to get another warm forcep. Actually, yeah. And if I see it's kind of moving, I might slightly adjust it as it's, I'm bringing it over. I'm going to get it cold so I can get them touched down and nice and even, all of them. That's important because any little edge up, I mean, we're, t we're cutting in microns, so the littlest bit up could be, you know, you could lose 50 microns trying to get to that area that's up, 50 to 100 microns. So that's why it's important to make sure they're all touched down. Then I'm going to put this on top. Another trick is, see how this has a cross here? To get less bubbles, if you try to get that paraffin spout to to dispense the paraffin over that cross, it usually makes less bubbles. And as you can see, I have no bubbles now underneath. Okay, and again, I see there's nothing stuck to the cassette top, so I just so I throw it away. All right, moving right along. Let's see what else we have. So this in here is just a single testes, so I'm gonna embed that with a small embedding mold or boat. I'm gonna add the paraffin in. We'll just go ahead and do this one as a longitudinal section and just do the whole thing. I won't need to cut that. It's And you know which things you need to cut after you do it a while, you'll know for your samples what you want to do with them. Now, if you happen to have like uterus and ovaries, which I don't have right now today, um, what you would do, I have these little weights here. I have this one and a smaller one. They're still, the small one is still a little bit bigger, so sometimes I'll use the sides of it. So. If you happen to have uterus and ovary, the whole thing, it would go into the bottom of this. You'd put your paraffin in, you'd orientate your uterus and ovary, the whole thing together. And you'd bring it over here and you start the chilling process and you would take this mold because you want it to be all nice and flat and you'd put it on there and flatten it. Just tamp it down for a little bit and that really is very nicely helpful. If you had something... Um, Anything, if you had a bunch of pancreas that you wanted in there and you can flatten it with that and just get it nice and even. So that's what these are for. And then this one, if you can use the sides of it, it's, it's too big to go into the small mold still, but you can, I use the sides of it to kind of get things touched down. You get the idea. So that's what these are for and they're in here. Actually, these are quite rare to get, so you don't want someone to walk off with them or to lose them. You need to keep these with the embedding center and make sure that they are always here. All right, let's do, I see I have a kidney here. Okay, it looks like somebody has nicked this kidney and I see there's nothing else, it's just the kidney. Um, somebody has actually cut it in half. So what I'll do is I'll just um, embed these as cross sections, one half as small than the other. So I'm obviously going to cut through that one before I cut through this one. So at some point we're going to lose the rest of that tissue. But I'll put the two in nicely centered. I could make this um, since that's a cross section, I could make this um, longitudinal. It's kind of a judgment call of what they may want. I'll just make them both cross sections. Now I see, so I'm trying to get it orientated. Now I see I have a little extraneous little piece here that's just kind of junk, so I don't 
need to have that in when I'm cutting and stuff, so I'll just get rid of that. And usually I have a gauze or something here, but I'll just do it that way. So we'll get it over here and get a quick chill on it. Get this on top. All right, let's see if we have a really tiny testes to orientate. Now, if you get five or six pieces, that's a whole different story. Um, you'll just, that takes a lot of practice. Again, you're gonna, um, you're gonna have to move quickly because as the paraffin chills, it's chilling like, you know, four or five microns at a time into layers. And as you're moving, trying to get another piece in, another piece in, and another piece in, um, you could have it conceivably a little higher and a little higher than the last piece. All right, I didn't have a sample to show you what to do, so I kind of made up some out of a little straw to show you how to embed several pieces at once. Now, of course, these are a little bigger than what we normally have, a little larger in diameter, but it'll give you an idea of what I do. So I put the paraffin in the bottom again, as usual, but this time I'm gonna um, grab one. I'm gonna see one that's kind of the longest. Now, I don't want this particular piece because it's actually gonna be higher than the um, actual boat itself. And what that's gonna end up doing is it's gonna tilt the lid when you go to put it on. And that's not gonna be good. So that piece would need to be um, trimmed a little bit shorter. So let me grab something really quick. I had to get a blank cassette top for us. Anyway, I'll put that over there and get that warmed up a little bit so when I put the paraffin on. So anyway, so you saw that that wasn't going to work out because it was just too tall. And then when I go to embed it, it's going to have this cassette top lifted up. So what I would need to do is probably cut this particular piece in half. Moving right along, though, I'm not going to cut that. I have some other smaller ones that I can demonstrate and show you. So um, I'll just set this off to the side. These are just pieces of straw. Okay, so we'll start off with a somewhat long one, but not so long that it... So what I do is I get it. I start to chill a little bit and I find an area and I get one piece there. Then I get a switch forceps. Grab another piece. You know, you don't let it chill too much, but you want it to be... You have to move fast. Now these straws are slippery. And you got to get another one. I don't want it to keep chilling too fast on me, so... And you can see I'm getting them in a row. You know, I'm demonstrating this, but I don't want it to go too quick. Okay. You got to move fast. Now, all the while, this paraffin is getting cold and it's lifting each piece, additional piece that I put in it's lifting it that much more. So it could be like, a, again, like I said, up to straws are slippery. So that's about all I'm gonna be able to get right now. And the paraffin is just too chilled. And you can keep doing that in, into rows. You know, these happen to be slippery, so I wasn't able to get as many as I wanted. And then you get the lid on top and do its final chilling and we'll see how that looks when we're done. But you kind of get the idea. You have to keep moving rapidly. You want to keep it in, in nice even rows, you know, the way you do it. Another thing is like um, skin specimens. You're going to want to embed at like a, um, a slight angle. Again, flat on the, the bottom. So you're going to have it flat on the bottom of the mold but at a little bit of an angle. The reason you do that is because skin has several layers and hair and stuff like that, and you want the knife blade to cut through one part and then continue traveling on and have always a fresh part of the blade hitting the tissue at one time. And then you'll get nice sections from that. 
Okay, so I had this sample over here waiting for us. This is another testes, and again, I'm going to embed that um, longitudinally, or some people call that sagittally. So I'll take this little piece here, I'll put it nice and even on the bottom, even all around. Now sometimes there's water um, that pools a little bit on the bottom of the paraffin as you're taking your ribbon, as you pick it up on the slide. So if you want to account for that, when I, um, to give you an idea, so when I embed, when I take this out of the mold, it's going to be cutting, hitting this edge first. So that means this top edge is going to be the edge that's probably going to pool. So if you embed the tissue a little bit closer to you, um, when you're cutting it on the microtome, then that pool of water will be on the opposite end so you can drain it easily without actually affecting your tissue. So if I were to embed this one, taking that into consideration, and that's something to always consider when you're, mic when you're embedding, what's it gonna be like when you microtome? How do you want it to be? And if you plan ahead, it's gonna make your microtoming a lot easier. So in this case, I might embed it like this. Not touching the edge, but down towards the bottom. So that way when it comes out of the block and it's on the microtome, because I know I face it the same way all the time, I know that pool of water is gonna end up there and I can drain it off without affecting my tissue. So I'm gonna plan ahead and embed this one a little bit down lower. So I can see I've got it um, stuck there. I'm gonna touch it down, get my top on, and it's got a little bubble. Okay. All right, so now you've had embedding. Now, when this tissue is done, sometimes you can hear a little bit of crackling from the blocks. That means that, that the, um, it's completely chilled and you know that they're done. You should never have to really force this tissue out. If you do, it's not good. Um, that means it's not completed its chilling process and you're likely to damage the block and have to re-embed it and possibly damage your tissue. It should come out of the block really nicely with just a little pull and just come right out, your embedded tissue. Again, it comes right out nicely. If you're having to force it, like this one, no, this one came out so that one's done too. And you can see it's embedded nice and evenly on the same level. Let me do one that's not even on the same level so you have an idea what that looks like and then I'll re-embed it later. So we have this kidney. I'm gonna cut it in half evenly. Again, I'm gonna hold it with a forcep and push and give it a nice cut, clean cut. You don't wanna be pushing if if it doesn't do a clean cut, get a fresh blade. You'll just wreck the tissue. So we'll embed this one first. We'll get it chilled and everything. And I'm purposefully making this unevenly embedded. So you have to see what that type of block looks like. So this is block 53992. And we'll take a look at that in a few moments. I'll set it off to the side here. These are nicely evenly embedded. You can see that they're nice and dark and towards the front together, even though they're two pieces. Again, it should come out nicely. If at this point, these first ones, if they're not coming out nicely, then maybe they've got some um, insulation a little bit from too much paraffin on the bottom. So what I'll do is I'll take my knife and just kind of scrape that off and keep it chilling a little bit more. So that's, but this one isn't, quite ready and I don't want to force it. Okay, so this is the testes with the epididymis that we just embedded. And you can see it's nicely evenly embedded. They're all at the same level in the paraffin block. You can see that. And here's the epididymis. Here's your um, longitudinal section and there would be your cross section. And when I cut it, I'll show you this particular block. Okay. Now you can see that there's paraffin on the edges, so I'm going to um, scrape those off. You can do it like this. Just be careful that you don't touch this to this hot pipe, but you can go like this and get it off. 
Um, I actually just use the knife. I have a, a dull knife that I use for scraping. It's a little bit faster, actually. But that's one possibility. Okay, so these molds, they're fine. They can just go right back in. I put them towards the back so they get melted and I can still use the ones in the warm front. And I try to keep all the molds. I don't just fling them in here. I keep them nice and even. So it's so easy to, to know that the small ones are there and the other ones. If you do things consistently, it's going to make your life easier. If they're just flung in there any which way, it's like, it's just, it's just kind of a hassle. It keeps them dirtier. It doesn't allow them to drain. You can see they've been allowed to drain. I'll have to wipe that out. So I really recommend that you encourage whoever's using our embedding center to Keep them facing the same way, keep them nice, you know, just, it's, it's going to save you in the long run. So I have this one. Okay, here's the one that I cut. And this is the way the Jameson Lab does our ENU um, tissue. Here was our longitudinal, I cut that um, whole testes in half. Here was our cross sections, and here is our epididymis. So they're nicely and even. Came right out. Okay. This is the knife I use for scraping the um, the paraffin, it's, a, it's actually dull, and I keep the gauze around it because the handle gets really thick with um, paraffin, and I have the garbage here, so I'll probably take it two blocks at a time, and I have them facing the same way, and I just hold them and scrape them, like you're peeling a potato, kind of, scrape all the edges. You want to try not to scrape the numbers off, you don't need to go that far, you're just trying to get the paraffin. This paraffin will interfere with microtomy. It'll change your knife angle. It'll change the angle of the block. So you really want it off on these sides. You'll be amazed how that little residual spot of paraffin on the sides will, when you cut the block one time and then you go to put it in, that paraffin has changed a little bit or been compressed and then the block face will be a totally different. If you don't have that paraffin on there, you don't have to worry about that. Okay, usually I go a little faster, but for demonstration purposes, I'm trying to show you. And then you have a nice clean block area all the way around. And this was what it looked like before. I had all the paraffin on the sides. Okay, and you get the idea. Now I, um, once you're finished with embedding, you're going to um, turn off this machine. This gets a lot of water condensation, so I keep a paper towel on it to absorb some of that. And then I scrape off the whole machine and wipe it down. You will be surprised how in just a few short weeks, paraffin can be everywhere and this machine can look like a disaster. So it's better every time to make the requirement that people clean it off every time. I mean, it's just amazing how paraffin can get everywhere from the floor to the wall to all over the place in, in a crazy amount of short time. So let me finish up the rest of these blocks. Nope, they're not ready yet. All right, so I haven't finished embedding all these. I'm gonna finish them up tomorrow. Now you can do this. It's not the greatest, especially if you have a sensitive tissue like one or day or two day old um, gonads or something that's sensitive tissue. But for testes and muscle and different things, 
you can just um, wrap them in foil and bed them another day. Put them in, you know, kind of airtight and, and bed them a few days later. It doesn't really hurt them. Now, I wouldn't leave them in this um, warm tray for a long period of time and then do this because if you do that, I would say a few hours or half the day, you're actually kind of cooking this tissue a little bit and it's going to be that much drier and harder to cut. You have to do a lot more soaking. But if you know that, you know, you just took it out the processor, you know you're not going to be able to finish embedding it, just go ahead and wrap several of them up and put them off to the side for another day. So I'm going to wrap these up like a nice little package. You know, you'll do it your own way. It doesn't need to be perfect. And we got a nice little package for next time, and I'll embed these a little bit later. Maybe I'll put one more piece since I see it's got some holes in it here and there. Okay, so I know that those are ready for me to do next time. Let's see if these are finished so we can move right along to microtoming. This one's ready. This one's ready. Okay, that one. So now this one's taken quite a while to get done and I see that there is a little bit of paraffin stuck on the bottom so I think it's creating that little insulation factor. I discussed with you so we'll hopefully that it won't affect that um, chilling of that particular block. Let's see if this one's ready yet. Oh and here's the nicely embedded rows that I did earlier with those straws I was trying to show you. To give you an idea and you can see they're still pretty evenly embedded. This one is a little bit in and that one's a little bit in but that's still acceptable. And I wanted to show you, give you an idea, even though these are just straws and I can't really cut them, but I wanted to give you an idea of how to embed several pieces into one block. Give you a little demonstration. Maybe I'll save this block for someone to look at and I'll put it as plastic straw. Okay, so embed demo, plastic straw. So somebody will know that's not actually tissue. All right, and I think this was the one that, okay, here's one that's not evenly embedded and probably wouldn't be real acceptable. Now, since it's kidney, we could probably get away with it, but for the most part, you don't want to have this like this. This piece of tissue here is way further up than this piece of tissue. I would say that that piece of tissue right there that's deeper into the block is probably a good 40 to 50 microns or more deeper into the block. You can still see it, but that might not be acceptable if it was a precious piece of tissue and you're looking to get all the sections. You really would rather not have your tissue look like that. And that's why you have the little weights to press things down. In this particular case, um, I didn't move fast enough when embedding the two pieces, as you saw. Or um, maybe I didn't... Um, push it down, that piece happened to be up a little higher and I didn't like touch it down further. But either way, that's unacceptable. All right, now we're gonna do the cleanup of the embedding center.